Well, thank you, Janice. Thank you, Janice. Uh, let me get this so that the Zoom people can see the top of me. Um, we're going to do this a little different than I expected. However, this is not that different than I used to do 20, 25 years ago for pruning. We didn't have PowerPoints. We didn't have this particular screen. I could have brought my projector and been hooked up just fine, <laughs> but I didn't. Uh, so we're going to do this uh, using the, the uh, pruning boards, which I'll use at the nurseries, where we don't have PowerPoint, and some samples of things that I'll show in, uh, on the Zoom and uh, move around. Now, before we get too much further, I just wanted to point out, if you have your reading glasses with you and want to know what the heck you signed up for last year for the Rose Show, I, uh, there are a the whole bunch of the sheets that you have signed on, and I transcribed them to one sheet that you can barely read. Uh, it's uh, a series of columns, and then the person you just go across, and you can see all the things you signed up for. Uh, and if you didn't sign up, you can see what things are available. So that's in the, uh, right under the uh, corner uh, of that long, skinny table. You should pick those up. No, it's not true. I did not put everybody on every committee. Uh, I think a couple of people are tied with me for being on too many things, though. Um, but, yes? But graciously, you provided a stack of books, so I took one. That's the idea. I can see my name on here. Yes. Uh, and uh, it, we could just pass those out if anybody wants to uh, pick them up as it goes by, even if you didn't sign up. I think I have maybe enough to give everyone one of those. I forgot one thing. I forgot one thing. This is important. <laughs> the Camellia Society has their uh, information of their show back here on an 8 by 10 piece of paper. And would you please take one of those and display, oh, she has them in her hand there. And display them at a billboard, or not a billboard, what do you call it? A bulletin board. Bulletin board. There we go. Billboard. <laughs> Yeah, on 101. <laughs> so I have these for anybody that knows where to post them. Um, if you want one for your bulletin board at home, I can send it to you electronically, um, and then you can do that. But anyway, talk to me afterwards, because I go around the neighborhood, and so you might meet me at certain spots. Anyway, we also have floral arrangement sections, so you can talk to us about it. We have time. We've got yeah. a, a I well, forgot I to, to I forgot to mention this. that. No, but once things get going, I don't want to forget that. Okay, thank, you. thank you. We're working on uh, cross-pollinating ideas for both of our societies. We uh, <clears throat> borrowed uh, some of the ideas because uh, of last year's Camellia Society. We said, oh, those draped uh, tablecloths look really nice. We got draped tablecloths. And you had some uh, different things in the way you uh, did things. Uh, like the little uh, logo going over the front, things like that. So uh, uh, we will also have flyers on the 26th when I'm going to give a talk on, among the other things, uh, soils for camellias and a little bit about roses too. So <laughs> I can't help it. I'm sorry. Uh, anyway, I'm going to do a couple of things here. We're going to record this with uh, Tomoko's help and have it available for people afterwards because it's really hard to do the uh, stand around and watch the pruning close up and get a decent video of it. So we're not going to, we wouldn't even going to try Zoom. We are going to try a Zoom uh, for just a couple of things at the beginning here. And then unfortunately, uh, I won't be able to uh, have all the uh, materials uh, for you guys, but I do have uh, the poster boards there. So hold on here just a second, and I'll see if I can get the zoom up, which you can't see, but. And uh, the people on the uh, zoom can see it. Can you turn your laptop around? We can see it. Uh, no, I can, uh, I can point you to what I'm doing, which is very similar to what's up there on the boards. If you can't see the boards easily, you can see them afterward uh, and take a look at it. But I'll, I'll, I'll walk through the main points. Uh, 
let me get this going here. For those people on Zoom, can you see that? Yes, looks good. Okay, uh, and this will be recorded. Uh, could you record that? Uh, start the recording on that. Uh, so what we've got on the first uh, panel up there on the far left in the upper part talks about when. When you're doing it is right now. Recording in progress. That's okay. Uh, we'll, th well, that's what we wanted. Uh, uh, we are going to be doing the pruning between now and Valentine's Day. Uh, it looks like we're going to have a little more cold weather too which I was wondering because it was actually pretty warm and some things started sprouting in my yard uh, early when the tropical air came through. But uh, uh, between now and the 15th is fine because our uh, May 7th is a little later than it was last year just because of the way that first Sunday fell. We're going to prune out, uh, prune out dead and diseased. I'm getting a feedback. That's Okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Can you mute yourself? Can you mute the microphone? You did. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, back, th this is such fun. Uh, Zooms never work perfectly. Uh, well, the main thing you want to do in this whole process is print out the dead, diseased, and damaged, and weaker crossing canes. We'll show you that in the real life uh, roses here. But if that's all you do and you shape the plant, they'll survive just fine. I hate to say how many times I've pruned with my hedge trimmers and not ever gotten around to the fine trimming. I just shaped the whole thing. And when I found out that that's how David Austin prunes their roses with hedge trimmers, not the way we teach with the fine points, uh, fine uh, sharp shears, uh, it, they survive pretty well. Prune the plants, leaving pencil sized canes if you've got them. Some minis and other uh, floribundas and things, you may not have a pencil sized cane or pinky size for me. Uh, and afterwards, if they're uh, sitting in the middle of a walkway and they've got thorns, prune the heck out of them. Make them do what you want, not what they want to do. Uh, the, if afterward you want to put dormant spray on them, if you ever spray at all. Some people don't want to spray at all, that's fine. Uh, then there's some things you can do in pruning. But if you dormant spray with copper and oil once during the year, on a dry day afterward, it'll improve the health uh, tremendously. It improves the fungal disease and other things. I've got some examples of fungal disease and proper cuts that I'm gonna pass around and I will actually show to the people on the, uh, on the Zoom here shortly. The uh, tools that I'm gonna show uh, are in the bag that I forgot to bring up here. Uh, this is uh, Vanna White here helping me. Because uh, I have to show them because I can't show them on the, on the screen. But they're, uh, they're there in the second panel. Uh, there are several things here. Thank you. Okay, there we go. There are several things that you probably have. A good sharp pair of shear, a uh, pair of pruners or secateurs or shears, and I and they are the kind that go one past the other, bypass. Very sharp. I always test them by cutting paper. If you can't cut paper with your shears, they're not sharp enough. And I can show you how to sharpen them afterwards if you don't know. These are a slightly larger for slightly larger canes, and I have some little cut inch and a half, uh, which I don't have many of in the roses. Uh, but uh, most things you can cut with a pair of loppers. These are small loppers. These happen to be Felco 20s. And this happens to be a Felco 8, which is a fairly ergonomic uh, set of shears. Then uh, you sharpen them every time. 
Uh, you can wipe them down. Uh, it's not as critical on roses as it is on things like orchids uh, or camellias. Uh, and then uh, the next one uh, down talks about uh, some of the other things you can use in, uh, in pruning. Uh, and on the, uh, on the PowerPoint here, I talk about shaping and pruning, uh, and that's the fourth slide down. You can see on it something that looks black. That's a dieback. And what happens if you prune in the wrong spot, way too high, way above the bud, there's no growth energy going up there. It's not trying to grow up that far. So what happens? It dies back. That's what dieback is about. And a good prune, if uh, you think of my finger as the uh, cane, and there's a, a little bud eye. You can tell it's a bud eye. It looks like a nose, and there's a smile underneath. That's where the leaf set was. So look for the nose. That's the growth point. And you want to have it uh, terminate the cut across from that bud eye, not too much above and certainly not too much below. If it's above the die back, if it's below, it dries out and it can die. The uh, next thing uh, down below on the far left there is pretty large and many roses. This is most of the roses probably in most yards. You may have climbers, you may have old garden roses, you may have uh, some shrubs that are pruned a little bit differently, but the basic idea, remove the dead disease and crossing, clear out the center. The thing I always use to illustrate it is one hand or open vase shape. The middle should be open. Same thing with pruning fruit, fruit trees, by the way. You want a sun area in the middle so that you can get more fruit. Well, you want more flowers, so you want the sun to get in the middle and it reduces the fungal disease. The air and light reduces the fungal disease. You remove the oldest canes periodically. Say you've got a 20-year-old rose. Been pruned in the same spot for 15 of those years. You've got a knob and, and some old scaly wood. Uh, what you can do is say you have six or seven of these. Take out a couple. You don't need that many. Take out the worst, oldest, weakest first Take them all the way down to the bud union or the base and remove those periodically. And I've done that on some 30-year-old plants, and you can rejuvenate the plant. The oldest rose in the world known is 800 years old. Now, it was severely pruned in the Second World War. It was bombed, and there was nothing left but the roots, and it came back. But it was it's on Helm in Germany in a church. That's severe pruning. Uh, light pruning is what I call, say, a third reduction in height. Heavy pruning, you can go all the way down to two-thirds reduction in height. What do you want? Do I want a lot of flowers and nice uh, flowers in the garden? Do I want long stems for in an arrangement or in the house? If you want longer stems, prune a little more severely. If you want a lot of flower, prune a little more lightly. Uh, something that I teach and not everybody uh, knows about is props. I think I have a prop there, but if I don't, uh, what it amounts to is uh, on the, the slide here is, oh, it's in the corner. Okay, I can't see it very well from this angle. Um, the prop shapes it. Say you have three canes that are fairly close together. You put one as a spreader in between, and sort of like bonsai, eventually it will uh, take the shape that you've left it. I've seen it a year later. You put a little Y on one end, put the uh, put the uh, the cane in there, a Y, and then put the other end on a thorn. And a year later, I've seen them still in the that same position. And then if you take it out, it stays in that position. So that's a, a trick. And you can use waste material and uh, cut the Y and make a prop that way. Pruning trees, roses, or standards are actually four different pieces of growing material. You think of maybe three. The roots, the long uh, trunk, if you will, and there are two things slightly offset 
uh, one from the other, if you look very carefully on a tree rose, and there are two, two things that are uh, actually grafted on. Those are the things you want. Anything else, they're suckers. I've seen them for sale even at uh, uh, some of the big box stores with two different roses on the top. So you can do that, but it's not very common. Uh, climbing roses. Uh, there's a climbing rose there, and it's very much a figurative. But I've got actually a piece of climbing rose I'm going to go get. And I'll just point out the climbing rose here is how you do it. This is a climber. This is, let's see, this is a climbing iceberg. Not everybody knows about climbing icebergs. The people on the won't be able to see this very well, so I'll just describe it to them. But uh, the key on climbers, when you're all done, and this one was about like this in the garden. See what happens here? This is called apial dominance. It wants to grow up. And so all of these things are growing up, and they've all bloomed. They happen to be pruned with the hedge trimmers to get it in here. But these have all bloomed. And if you have it like this in the garden, what happens? Well, it says, I'm going to bloom at the top. And so you get, like, say my hand is reaching up, you get the blooms on the end. So if you want it to get more bloom, train it. Put it sideways, maybe tip the tip down, and you'll get a lot more bloom. Now, the way you can prune it is actually very easy. You can do what I've done and cleaned it up a little bit, not just with a hedge trimmer. Or you can just cut it down to the base. What you might find is two come up from the same spot if you just cut it right along the, uh, the edge. <clears throat> uh, removing suckers, very important. How do you know what a sucker is? If you're growing over roses, you don't have suckers. If you're growing uh, grafted, which many of the ones sold are because it's faster to reproduce them, uh, I'm going to use the hands again. Uh, the roots go down, and on top of the roots, there's a, you okay? I'm fine. I'm sorry. I, I have to get, I have to see who's on the Zoom. Oh, <laughs> okay. Sorry. Um, uh, I think it's just Pam right now, uh, not the other. Uh, so anyway, the uh, roots and then the uh, bud union, think of it as a fist. And then coming out of the fist are the main canes. Anything that's coming out of the uh, bud union, fine. Anything that's coming from below, that's a sucker. Hard as heck to get rid of. It's almost impossible to get rid of them on some of them. Uh, and uh, uh, the uh, suckers that I've had in the pictures here are pretty significant. There's one, uh, you can't really see it very well, but it was taken as a picture down at the San Jose Municipal Rose Garden. One side of the fence, a little bit of pink bloom. The other side of the fence, a huge red bloom. The sucker was the red. They will take over. They will suck all the life out of it. That's the way I think of as uh, why they are called suckers. And I had a friend who had a row of white roses in his backyard, and he said, why is this one red? It wasn't the queen of hearts. Uh, it was the... Uh, fact that he had a sucker that had completely taken over. There was no white rose. I said, take it out, put another rose in. Uh, if you do fertilize periodically, you can use uh, things like Osmocote. I've, I've done that. Uh, or other chemical fertilizers, slow release. We have some that we sell here. Uh, and they're fine. Uh, and I worked for a fertilizer company when I was a uh, uh, college student testing plant tissue in Idaho. And I learned a lot about fertilizers, but I've learned since then that I really would rather use organics. And uh, there are lots of great organics. Compost plus some of the organics like alfalfa are things I use all the time. Uh, alfalfa also has something called tricontinol in it, and that's a stimulant for growth. I use it on everything, including camellias. And it works. Uh, good po uh, compost adds nutrients and micronutrients and improves the soil health. Sure, question. Can you stop, we don't fertilize 
We don't in the winter. But I'm now I'm working on towards spring if you uh, if you've finished your uh, pruning and I don't have it in that one. Uh, I had it in this presentation. So uh, after February is normally when you would do the fertilization, right after pruning, because that's when the growth starts. Uh, now is the plant time to plant or replace? There's uh, there was a question before we started on uh, repotting in a pot, and I have a planting uh, handout over there if you're interested. But the, the repotting uh, is on Peninsula Rose Society YouTube, our channel, and I did one on potting as well. But now is the time to shovel prune. I've got a couple I'm going to shovel prune this year. Several of them I've had for quite a few years. And I said, why am I keeping that? I, have, I need the room to plant something else. And shovel pruning is like it sounds. You take a shovel and you dig it out and you get rid of it in the compost. Own roots and uh, plants are available now in many places. Uh, some, only, uh, some companies like Heirloom only provide uh, own root plants and all the ones that I've started at home are own root. The two first ones there, the big ones, those are both own roots. The first one is a, uh, a one that I think I got from Carol. I think that's a Baron Prevost, uh, and, uh, or Baron Prevost, or however it's pronounced. And the second one is on its own roots and is three years old, and it was given to me, or actually uh, in uh, 2019. And so that's three years old, and it's a pretty good size now. It's been blooming for almost two years. So uh, you can get those now, and that needs planting up, either in a big pot or uh, out into the yard at this point. Question. Sure. How long, how long can you leave a rose in a pot? Uh, how long can you leave a rose in the pot? Too long. Uh, mm -hmm. I've done it. Uh, that one, if you look very carefully, there's a little white root coming out of the bottom, and it's ready. <laughs> it's overly ready. Two years is about as long as I leave in a five-gallon pot for a medium size or rose. Uh, I've got some in pots though where I root prune it and replant it in the same big pot and just add a little more soil and amendments. Oh. You can keep doing that every few years. Okay. When you root prune it, kind of how do you describe how you do that? Root pruning. Uh, there's a couple ways you can do it. The first thing to know is don't put it in a pot that's shaped like this. I did that once. It took me three hours to try and dig it out. Yeah. If you have a pot like this, uh, you can get it out. And, and it's sort of comical, the uh, video I did, because it sort of went poop when I tipped it over, but it worked just fine. That's one way. And I have a uh, uh, dedicated bread knife that does a very good job of sawing through all around on, and take off maybe an inch or two of root all around on a big pot and off the bottom. And that's root pruning. And then you add additional soil and amendments and fertilizer down in there. Voila, you've got a, another couple of years out of the same pot. But don't do what I did, uh, have it in the wrong shape pot. Uh, that, uh, especially if it's an expensive pot. <laughs> um, and then also later, usually February is about right. Like I say, things get started. Um, I actually... As I said, things started uh, growing. I'm going to pass this around as an example of a proper cut, but it's above, uh, actually it's a high cut. Uh, let's see if I can show this. It's a high cut, but it's got about a three quarter of an inch long bud that has started growing. Say it's on the wrong place. Say it's going to crowd the middle. Well, how, it's finger pruning. Push down on it, it's gone. I'm going to, uh, I cut off the thorns on this. If you'd like to grab it and uh, pass it around, this one uh, says cut high. So this one's cut high. Then I'll, I'll pass around one that has some dye back on it. Actually, I don't need to take this out. Uh, Pam, uh, could you grab that? And then here's one that's cut too low. Thank you. That's cut too low. Uh, so We've got uh, the different cuts, which are also shown on the, uh, on the thing there. You can, you can see what the uh, cuts look like. 
There's one other thing that I didn't mention about when you prune. Normally between now and February, but uh, we prune once bloomers after they bloom. What's a once bloomer? Well, uh, something like Madam Hardy, an old rose, is a once bloomer. Something like uh, the uh, uh, Lady Banks rose. Yeah, uh, Lady Banks rose is a once bloomer. Uh, so uh, when do you prune those? I do it with a hedge trimmer, and I do it afterwards, after they bloom, mainly to shape or remove anything dead. Uh, later on, on a, after you've uh, stripped all the leaves off, after you've pruned everything off, after you've cleaned up all the leaves, and I'll show you why in a minute, uh, after you've done that, after you've done that, uh, you want to spray. If you spray, always wash up, use goggles, use a hat uh, to keep any uh, spray. And use it, uh, do it on a dry day. It's going to be dry for 24 hours. And uh, the bees won't be out because there are no blooms. But do it before any bees appear because you don't want to spray the bees with copper and oil. Uh, you can, yes? Can you mix um, the horticultural oil and the copper in a, in a single bucket? The, the, the question is, can you mix copper and oil in a single bucket? I've done it. I believe you can. It used to say so when it was the same supplier. Now you get one and you get the other, and you don't usually see that on the label. So I, I do it. It's uh, uh, Actually, when you do many sprays, you use something called a surfactant or a spreader, sticker, and uh, that's like an oil. So yes, you can, and I do. But with everything, be careful. Don't get it on yourself wash up afterward. Spray the undersides of leaves as well, if there are any leaves uh, still remaining or if new growth. The reason you want to spray uh, and you want to clean up all the leaves is illustrated with this one. This, if you hold it up to light, you can see black spots. This is black spot. Black spot is a fungal disease. You look on the bottom of the leaf and uh, there are no spots underneath. But there are spores, and if it's sitting on the ground and you spray it on the top and the spores are on the bottom, what happens? The spores are still there. This is late season rust. Rust in the early season looks rusty. Late season it looks like black spots. And you can see on both sides of the leaves there's something. And uh, it's smaller spots. It's not black spot. It is uh, a fungal infection. And that's why you spray around the plant, because if the leaves fell on there, they would uh, infect. And then finally, when we have to do it again, water and mulch. The mulch is important to produce weeds and to retain water. Uh, and roughly five gallons per week in the summer is great. Right now, my roses don't need a thing. And if you're trying to prune, be careful walking around them, because if you compact the soil so much in the mud, there's no air. Proper soil should have about 25% air. Um, Question. When you're doing the mulch, so let's say we mulched last year, now it's time in February to fertilize. Do you don't put the fertilizer back on top of the mulch, or how do you uh, uh, layers? Let me uh, actually go through that in another, uh, okay. uh, in another thing, not on this presentation. Okay. Uh, but the uh, uh, quick answer is I did it in the fall, and I do it in the spring. Uh, the mulch. Yep. What I do is I use, uh, and this is something I know uh, Carl knows well, I use a power auger and I drill holes. This you can plant bulbs with, but if it's nice and loose and friable, which it isn't right now, it's mud, but you can go down pretty quickly and in about uh, two minutes you can drill three holes about six or eight inches deep and I just pour the uh, alfalfa and time release in there cover it over, then I add compost in a donut around it, then I add mulch around the, the bed. So that's how I do it. And it's been great for my roses. Yeah. 
And that's it for these slides. Let me just uh, say that for those, uh, I think it's just uh, Pam Shank, uh, and I'm going to sign off now on the uh, Zoom, and we're going to uh, stop the recording. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, we'll have the recording for other people. Yes. Recording stopped. Uh, winter is the best time to move them. Which one? Winter, right now, uh, there is. Before I prune them or prune them first? Oh, well, you have to hack them down to be able to handle them. Right. Uh, I've, I've, I've done a 12 foot uh, climber before and moved it successfully. So you can't even do the big ones. But uh, since they won't have a lot of fine roots to support the rest, as soon as it dries out enough so that you can work the soil properly, okay. would be a great time. We're supposed to have nice cold, dry weather for a little while anyway, so uh, I'd, I'd definitely think about digging it out. Okay. Uh, there's a tool that I like. Uh, by the way, this is my large potted rose illustration. You can do it. Uh, but uh, I really worry about compaction right now. The what? Compaction. Oh, yeah. Because uh, most of urban landscapes and anything that's been walked on, any pathways, et cetera, really compact. In this mud, I mean, there's no air left. You can drown the darn things. Uh, and like you say, clay soil, hard pan, well, clay, you know, just doesn't want to drain. Uh, anyway, uh, I think there's, if you want to look at any of these things, these are the slides that I couldn't show you, but they're, They'll be available, and this is what I'm going to work with anyway in the, in the other. And then we'll go over here, and I will sh I just had a question. Sure. Do you yeah, Judy. Gypsum, to, to loosen up the soil? gypsum does a, a couple of things. It, it loosens clay a little bit, but it really doesn't add uh, the aeration. Humus, uh, and I, compost, yeah. The, the, the different composts are the thing to uh, give you. Uh, most of the uh, aeration and the humus as it degrades. Uh, I like wood compost myself. Uh, people use rock and they use rubber uh, bits and everything else. They don't degrade. Uh, I like the, you can keep old uh, mulch on and the, the uh, fungi, bacteria, and uh, destroyers will eventually degrade the uh, material, uh, and they'll add to the tilth of the soil, and they'll add to the structure of the soil. Uh, the other thing that I've learned in master gardens is don't weed. Now, don't pull out the roots. Are you kidding me? Uh, no. Uh, uh, I, there's, there's the inactivity of not getting it done, but I always pulled the roots out, shook them out, but recently I've joined a climate uh, group in the Master Gardeners, and uh, if you want to sequester the carbon, don't do it that way. You can tell me I don't take the axalis out. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, there are some things that, forget it. Uh, but uh, cover crop, mulch, do those things. Mulching will help, because what happens when I've got a weed growing through mulch? I pull it and it comes out easily because it's loose. The structure is, is not into deep soil. Uh, so heavy mulch, three to five inches even. Costs a little bit, but it uh, saves you uh, 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 a lot of things, including water. You add your mulch right up to the base of the rose? Oh, no, I, I keep a, uh, I think I say it here. Um, anyway, keep a ring six to eight inches on each side. Uh, and and I, I pull it back. It's just to keep fungal disease and, and bacterial disease. You can get gall and, and things like that uh, around the base. Other questions before we start actual pruning? You had mentioned the compaction. Uh, so how long after tomorrow's rain should we wait to get out? How's your soil? Pardon? How's your soil? Is it Actually, spongy? It's good. Uh, some parts of it, the real low parts, uh, yeah, you can see the water. It's, it's mushy. But that's not where the roses are. The uh, roses 
that sounds pretty good. Uh, if you did walk on it, would it feel spongy or would it feel muddy? Yeah, the, the thick, right now I've got so much mulch that I walk on it and I can feel it, it goes down about a, almost an inch. Uh, that means there's a lot of air near the surface. Some of the roots go up there too, so it won't drown quite as easily. But uh, I'd probably wait a, a while because there's so much water in the soil right now. I probably would, yeah. What if you could stand near the plant and lean over right. and do it? Uh, you, can, you, can, you can prune if you can get to them that way. You can prune a pot. You can prune yeah. a lot of things. By the way, those that didn't hear, underneath these two pots is the best saucer I've ever found. It was 50 cents at Target, and it's a plate. And they were on sale. Instead of a buck, they were 50 cents. So mm -hmm. I bought a whole bunch. I bought several dozen of them so that I could save... Uh, just the right amount of water in the bottom. Mm -hmm. And the roots are actually, I'll show it to you. Uh, this one. Oh, look, coming out. Yeah. yeah, there's some roots. There's, there we go. Wow. That's a root. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, they're happy now, but it needs to get transplanted. Um, so, uh, Carol, do you want to grab a couple, and I'll grab a couple, and we can... We can uh, gather around. You can ask questions. There are pruning instructions as well as care through the year instructions over here if you haven't picked those up. They're also on our website, um, and you can download them from there. Uh, I'm sure we'll want to, uh, it, it, those that don't want to stand up close, uh, I want to read this. That's fine. I do have a small version of a uh, this is actually a mini. Doesn't look like a mini, does it? Uh, but it, it was in back of another, so it was reaching for the light. Uh, this is gourmet popcorn. Anybody wants to start a gourmet popcorn, you can have. I've got some started, but... Uh, so that was my question. Can you use any of the parts that you cut off for pruning for cutting? Yes. Is this okay time? It works. Okay. I started a whole bunch last year, and they're growing now, and they're leafed out, and... <coughs> Blooming in several cases. So when you do that, do you put them all in one container and label it, or do you just? Can I get the other one of my boards? I have my propagation boards here. <laughs> you can, uh, we can, anybody can ask me anything about that. This is nutrition and diseases, and this is propagation. Uh, yeah, okay, great, great. Uh, yeah, that'd be a good place for it because it won't blow over or anything. But this talks about fungal diseases, sprays, things like that, types of fertilizers, what have you. Oh, well. Uh, this tells you how to make the cuttings. This tells you how, and there's a write-up on it that if it isn't there, I can send it to you, Meg. Uh, but I actually bottom water and or mist. I do have a greenhouse. That does give it a little bit of an extra start, but you can do it in the wintertime. You just won't get much growth until we start to get warmer weather. And you can see I start them four to a four-inch pot, then move it one to a four-inch pot, then move it to a one-gallon pot, then it goes to these, five. They're, they're mostly too thin. Okay. If it's, you can try, uh -huh. but, but you, all the energy to make the roots is coming out of what's left. Got it. So that's the problem with that. Thank you. And then at the very end of this one, it says, this is a Sally Holmes, 11 months old, bloomy. So, so uh, I think we're almost ready here. Uh, and... The next thing I'm going to suggest is that you need pairs of heavy gloves, gauntlet gloves, to keep, and it's good to wear a shirt. And I'm wearing lined pants that are very handy in the cold, but they're also very handy for thorns. Having had to go to the doctor once to have a uh, something lanced because I got an infection when a 
Rose got me in the back of the knee. And uh, so you want to be careful about bacterial infections. And then there are some heavier gloves that I've got here. They're still, as in the people that make chainsaws. So these are heavy. Oh, Siri found something too. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, the, these gloves are uh, nice because this part is goatskin. Goatskin is both more thorn penetrant and more flexible when it gets wet and dry. So I like goatskin with leather on the top. You want to grab a couple and we can both uh, do a little bit of this and people can gather around that way and see. This is going to be hard for anybody to see in the video, but we'll do what we can do. Do you want to take... Uh, I, I did bring a mini to do. So. Okay, we, we've got five, I guess. Do you want to do one of those or, or, or the minis? Okay, well that way we can have one on each end and, and I'll move this down for anybody to study. You can take pictures, I can send you the, the, uh, the, uh, this whole thing. So, any more questions before we get started? Because I'm going to probably use my main uh, clippers that I was showing you. So what am I supposed to do with this? Clip it. You want me to have it on? I can take it off. I don't care. Anyway, the, the, the main thing I wanted to say about it is that roses are, are different. And so when you come to looking at your rose, you kind of have to remember that roses grow differently. And then there are some roses, for example, an old rose or a china rose, that don't like to be pruned much. So if you have a rose that you know doesn't really like to prune, will die, for example, if you prune it too much, uh, like Mutabilis, for example, or um, a Moonstone, which we did once. We pruned it down too far, and it just died. So. Um, if you know a rose doesn't send out lots of growth, then prune it lightly. If you see that there's just all these uh, shoots coming out from the um, bud union, then de de you, you can feel f freer about pruning it down, uh, pruning more of it off. And as Stu said, um, do if you see a lot of old, none of these do. These are all fairly young. But if you have a lot of dead, silvery, brown, black uh, um, stems or, or part of them coming out, uh, or even a big lump, you might try you know, scraping off some of that in order to, to let um, a shoot come through the old bark, for example. Or if it's an old shoot that's you know about this tall and the growth has been up here and you want it to be lower, then cut it all the way back down to the bed union. You can take out about one or two a year. If you've been neglecting it for 20 years, then maybe you can take out five of them. I mean, you know, it really depends. So look at your rows and know a little bit about how it grows and then decide how much you're going to take off. Any I'll the minis because I find that there's like so many little branches I never know how many to cut or what to cut. Right. Can you just whack them off and not care, or do you have to like do like you do on a big road where you're looking at every little? Oh, <laughs> what what I tend to do is just try to well like this one for example. It has a lot of shoots in here. Yeah. I probably put in. You know, e either it's sending out more from on the on the edge. And maybe you don't want those, so you can either cut them out or cut them down low and then repot it in another uh, some soil 
and see if you can give that one away. I mean, <laughs> you know, um, I, I would say that with minis, it's mostly shaping it. So if you don't like, and if it has some very old stuff like this, you know, you might want to take that down, down, down here. You don't want it growing way up here mm -hmm. if you have uh, a mini. And um, this one is, is the one that I, I brought in to give away. So this is um, uh, Deja Blue. It's a, it's like, it's a lavender type, uh, pinkish lavender. A uh, very good grower, um, and, but it's a mini flora, so it'll it'll get kind of pretty tall. It's a big, big mini flora, um, but as you can see, it can stand some shaping. You can take out this funny angle here, and and so what you do is just shape it and leave it kind of twiggy. So don't cut every all 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 the way down. Leave leave it so that it has growth to grow, come up. This is a real mess, so you know there's a lot you can take out. <laughs> and, and both of these are not uh, well pruned. Yeah. For a while. But these are um, the favorite size for us for most pruning is some a small lopper, not a you know you you need a big lopper for when you get those big old gnarly things at the bottom. But in general, you can do a good number amount of your pruning with this. And I, we do as Stu does, which is try to take off, you know, the very stuff that's growing way up here. We just try to lop it off so that we have, so that it's easier to get to and you don't have so much in your, in your face when you're trying to prune. And if you don't have a big lopper, get a, a finer pruning saw. Oh, that's a nice one. Yeah, like a Fisker's. Mm. Are we ready to I just let them? I think we're ready. Uh, we, we, we want to finish here too. Uh, and right. like I say, I uh, found the best tool that I've uh, been able to get in the last few years is one that uh, Emma McGraw actually had, and I uh, uh, copied her the tool. It's a huge hedge trimmer, very powerful. And uh, you just basically go through and shape to the outermost area that you might want the plant. And you do it with these. I don't want this <laughs> anything longer than about this. So this is not pruning. This is just getting rid of some of the excess volume. And then I can see is a little. Is that a flora manga? No. This is, is actually an old rose. This is uh, their own privilege. So that's an old rose. Mm -hmm. And I, what I am going to do is I see a bunch of twiggy things. Whoa, that just took out some of the middle right there. Because it was going into the middle, it was twiggy. And this is another little twiggy thing. And another going into the middle. Isn't an old rose often a once bloomer? No, in Not this case, bloom. this is a um, perpetual? hybrid perpetual. Yeah. Oh, wow. It is. It blooms all the time. Wow. This particular rose blooms all the time. It's a pink rose, about that big. It is very fragrant, and all of those clippings that he's taking off. You, if you took uh, one, took some. You want them? Yeah. Take a hunk. Take I mean, take a piece. Ones. The thicker branches will root more easily. So, for example, if I had a choice between this one or this one, you would take the thicker one. Now, she can get lots of, out of this, so maybe she can share. You know, yeah, we can, cut, can cut, cut this off so that somebody else can have some of it. But these will all start on their own roots, and they'll make, and it'll, um, it likes to grow out pretty big, um, but it doesn't get really tall. If you, you can keep it down just by pruning it every year, but it is a wonderful, wonderful, fragrant bloomer, blooms all the time. So Stu, when you said take off the leaves, you mean yes. literally take all the leaves thick one. on everything you prune? Yep. Now, oh. how do you do it on the 12 You take all of them off of every I plant? I take all of them off of everything. Mm -hmm. And you do it by what I'm doing here, 
pulling down on all the leaves. This allows you to do several things, including seeing what you're doing. Right. Uh, oh, we need a garbage got can. It. Yeah, we do need a garbage can. Well, I guess I can. I can. They're on. It's barren, but it's. I think we can um, if you use buy this. A new rose that's in your root hole and it's leaving, do you get rid of those two once you plant it? Uh, if you can save them, the problem is they don't have the hair roots. So I do prune it back. Uh, I may leave. Say it's got some one inch growth on it. You, you get something at a. Uh, big box store or Costco, it often has leaf on it still. You may have to leave some of it on. Uh, the main question is, is it going to be healthy? And that's one of the big reasons for stripping all the leaves off. Uh, and also cleaning up around the base. Oh, perfect. Oh, oh thank Great. you. I'm uh, not the cleanest pruner. What I do is I try and get my pruning done before Wednesday, and then I have the gardener come and I know. Uh, pick and it up. Empty the stuff. Yeah. I have to do it before the guys are going to come so I can fill up my recycling. Exactly. Bag. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, oh, that's a good point. Composting is great. Home composting is great. Don't do it with your roses. Why? Unless you're absolutely uh, scrupulous about 140 degrees, all the way through, all the time, it's not going to kill the uh, fungal disease. And so uh, you'll have overwintering critters. Uh, and if you are like me and compost uh, for the worms, I, I do vermiculture, worm composting, it never gets hot. And so don't put anything in there that's diseased. Carol, what roses is it that you're Yes, okay. So, and you can take clippings, cuttings from these, this too. It, uh, not I legally. think, no? Not legally. It's just oh, not, not legally. Oh, oh, all right. It's However, called Shining Moment. Okay. Uh, Floribunda? What color? Uh, yeah, it's a Floribunda, and you oh, can see the one. remnant of a bloom there. Uh, blooms a lot. Uh, Flor, abundance. Flower, abundance. Uh, uh, you prune them a little more lightly, more branching structure. There's not a lot of branching structure on this, but uh, you really don't have to do a heck of a lot of uh, pruning that I, uh, other than stripping the leaves. There are some things that do not like to be sprayed. Uh, Rutendorf, I think is the name. Pink Rutendorf I have. It says, do not spray me, because uh, he just doesn't like it. But most of them do just fine with a uh, proper oil, including the old roses. How old does the rose have to be to propagate it? Uh, 2001, it has to be 20 years old. 20 years uh, old. Or, yeah, 20 years out, and then it's out of path. Okay. Uh, so things like um, Gemini That's was... Yeah, uh, so good. Uh, uh, you, anyone that wants to come and see it a little closer can yes. certainly do it. Now, what I've just done is make it so you can see the structure. And it's there are still twiggy. a few things in here that I'll probably take off. There's a spindly growth here. Mm -hmm. It's sort of crossing. There's another spindly here. I'm going to leave one going to the outside. And you were asking, can you leave something that's actually sprouted? I just did. Now, when you go to spray, it's possible you can spray burn it if it's really hot and you spray it and it sits on there. Might spray that, but it'll, it'll keep growing probably with a little bit of oh, leaf burns. Now, uh, what yeah, I don't but I don't have like this either. So. Readily available. I wonder if I can borrow something sure. that has a Y. Do you have any Ys here? Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can use this. This allows me to show you the prop. If anybody wants to propagate, they can steal the prop out. Um, but, you know, if I wanted it to go out this way, instead of all over this way, what I do is take one end, cut it flat, and stick it I should it have brought you an extra cutter. <laughs> <laughs> Ta-da! Now, I'm I doing take a lot. that out. I don't out. like this one. There you go. That is a power. All right. 
Uh, now, obviously, when you're printing a lot of roses, you get a lot more of, of the Y structure. Yeah, we're just trying to finish one uh, at a time here. Anybody that wants to propagate gourmet popcorn, which is a great mini, that's that. And this is what's left of Baron Prevost. Uh, both of those are Baron Prevost? Pink. Prevost, yeah. Mm -hmm. And fragrant. Okay, now I just cut these off without looking. Uh, I'm going to look for things that grow to the outside. How do you find them? You look for the smile, a nose and a smile. There's no eyes. Uh, and this one, there's one coming this way. You cut above it, and that's going to grow out this way. You cut above one that's growing in, and it'll grow in. Say I missed one, and, and that's the thing that grew. Click and cut again so that it's growing to the outside. Do you recut like a, a, a week later, two weeks later, a month later? A recut or walk through with your hand in a glove to go like this down the middle yeah. and knock off the stuff that's grown in the middle because that's budding out from the inside. Yeah. But yes is the quick answer. You can cut to anything that didn't go right the first time. So, uh, this one, uh, I could probably do without it just to have a little more uh, oh, like it. room. It's close. And again, that's one for anybody that wants to look at the bear and prove on. So, what I've got now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I might cut out this little guy. Wow, from that big shaggy thing. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it was pretty yeah. shaggy. Yeah. Uh, there's not much left, but what I'm going to do is cut to the outside, cut to the outside. I just want to see what you're, where you're, okay. I see it's this thing that you're. Okay. Uh, yeah, above that. Uh, I cut it too. Okay. And here is one that's going. So this when is actually, you say the outside, the inside, you mean this is going outside or it's going inside it, it, That's a thorn. This is a, a butt eye, and that's going inside. I wouldn't cut above that. Okay, so this one that. right here. Okay. So it's growing this way. Oh, right? Yeah, that's growing that way. Right so there. Okay. So that is different than the thorn, what you're talking about. Right. This is what you're cutting. Yeah, out. and, oh, and okay. on a very, very old bush. It's amazing what you can find. They're really dormant, uh, completely dormant bud eyes. They're not trying to grow, but if you cut above, say it's an inch thick, big old cane. You cut above that and you find a little smile and a little dot and you say, is that a bud eye? Yeah. It's going the right way? Yeah. Cut above it. And it'll spread. The growth energy goes up and it finds, finds the right spot and it takes off in that direction. So that's the key, I think. So you, you cut like completely all the leaves off like that? Yep. What if they're little sprouting leaves? Just little well, uh, I, I was showing the one that I had there, uh, and uh, I, uh, you can't keep them if they're sprouting. Uh, like I said, we had a little warmer weather with that, all that water, and I wasn't out there doing anything. Uh, so. Uh, we have a few sprouts in the in the in the yard. Okay, Aliza, take the big leaves off. Take all the uh, old leaves off. Leave the sprouts on there, and then when you're uh, spraying the bare canes, you want to spray all around, and you want to spray the those uh, sprouts too. If you do it early in the morning, it's not too hot; they don't tend to burn. Uh, copper and oil smothers the insects. <coughs> That's the action of the oil. They have book lungs, and it clogs them up, and they can't breathe. The uh, copper is a fungicide, and so the combination gets all the overwintering fungi, and, and you get a much cleaner uh, plant later on. Okay, uh, this one is. It's French lace. Earth. It's written on the other side. I oh, the tag was already in there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, French lace doesn't need much. I don't think. I don't think probably. Not. Uh, there's a little. Sort of died back piece here. There's the leaves. I know, I know. Especially the ones that are 
ones you propagate, you're like, oh my gosh, I'll kill it. You, you, you're not killing it. It's got plenty of juice in the roots, and you're not transplanting it. If I right. transplanting it, I, I might leave some leaves. Yeah. But uh, French lace is a great rose, by the way. Yeah. Remember I said that tale about the white roses in a row and the red ones? They were a row of French lace. Oh, that's nice. I have three of them and yeah. lost one to a gopher recently. Yeah, they are. They're nice roses. Yeah, Do you cut all the leaves off, even off your bigger roses, or is this just because this is small? Uh, yes, I cut as many as I can get. Uh, some of my climbers are out of my reach, and I can reach quite a ways. Uh, and what I do there is I get the ones I can, use a long clipper on some of the things that really don't look great, and they survive. Uh, the, the question is, uh, are they susceptible to disease? What I've gone to, by the way, this has a perfect example of dieback. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to see what dieback looks like. Watch the thorns. I didn't de thorn that. Mm -hmm. I uh, almost hate to do it. To take the right. blossoms take off. The the <laughs> this is the time of year when uh, I take the blossoms off too. Yeah. But do you have to? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you have. If you look carefully, you may see uh, little red dots with a, a dot in the middle. Yeah. Looks like a target symbol. That is Botrytis. Same thing that makes the no noble rot on grapes. Oh. And Botrytis will infect more and more leaves in the wet weather. On the, flowers. On, the flowers. on the flowers we Take see. It off. Yeah. Take it off. Yeah. Unless you're trying to make grapes. Don't take care. No, no. no. Well, I don't even use the water, so I'm not buying <laughs> That's why I need help. I'm too wimpy of a pruner. I always like, oh, I can't reach the back. Well, I didn't cut all that much length. Uh, That's okay. That's why I brought it. I thought it would be helpful to see that. When they're that age, that's when I have a lot of trouble deciding what to do. Because you're trying to pot them up. I'm trying to think, should they just get as big as they can? The root structure is what's going to give it all the energy to make the new leaves. The old leaves may still have some disease. This is a one year. Oh, actually. This is 21, but one year. Yeah. yeah, how old is this? Uh, that one Pretty. is three. Three years old? Oh. It's three. It, it's, it's root bound at this point. Mm. And I never really did a great job of printing it before. So. And this is a little over a year. Wow, that's a fast one. It's a, it, wow. it's a vigorous rose. Maybe a year and a half. Wow. I'll just take a piece of this so someone can have the rest of it. Either or both. Take both. Try more than one at a time. Yeah. yeah and yes. I'll take. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. And I'm going to take all the leaves. I'm going to take a picture of here. Yeah, you can take a picture of the propagation. Anyway, somebody came along. I just want to make sure that that's what it looks like. There's one here. Right like there. There's one here. Yeah. And uh, that was a that was a mistake. It, yeah, and it says 45 degree angle. Well, like I say, if you use a hitch clipper, it still works. By the way, I'm going to meet with some every people that are in the group uh, tomorrow for lunch. Oh, really? Oh, that's great. Say hi from me. Yeah. We're, we're, we don't get together that often, but uh, uh, there, there are a few people still there. Most of the time. Yeah, Jack Hart's been with me, and, and uh, Norris Arona, and uh, you know, people like that. I go fishing with them. Are there any other questions we can illustrate? Yes. Question. <laughs> oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, how many? What, what's your upper limit on number of canes coming from the base of a plant? I have a rose that has like twenty canes coming out of it. They all look perfectly healthy. Well, uh, <laughs> what are you trying to do with the plant? Are you trying to make a really floriferous uh, shrub out of it with short, uh, short stems, or are you trying to get longer stems? A, a bigger structure out of the plant? What are you trying to do with the plant? Well, it's, it's, the hybrid's not called ballerina, so it looks more oh, like Oh, I, I, have, yeah. I have one like that. Yeah. 
and ballerina at Pololi is this high. A parent of uh, uh, Sally Holmes, by the way. Oh. And uh, it grows everywhere. So does Sally Holmes. Sally Holmes is bigger. Uh, I have to cut out out of my Sally Holmes quite a few of the canes. I have to cut out quite a few of the canes in my ballerina. And I also make a climb against the fence. So it's this tall going out in these directions <laughs> on what is really a very small rose. So uh, I cut them out. I, I leave maybe, I take it maybe a third of them out every year because it just comes like mad. Is a dozen a good upper limit? Oh, yeah. I, there's no upper limit. <laughs> if it's too crowded, if it's uh, if you can't see air and light in the middle, or if you have a, that doesn't have a lot of disease though either. Yeah. Like you say, it's a very healthy plant. Um, it's I wouldn't worry too much about it. It looks okay. Thin it out. Uh, don't don't worry. Okay. One hand rule is for you know standard uh, sort of shrubs that. Uh, I have 250 big roses. I have another 200 that I'm trying to spawn off on people. Karen, Karen has already has probably a dozen, I would guess. Yeah, and, uh, and Pam is We're babysitting him until the show. Foster Pam is yes. babysitting. Yes. Please, I'm running out of space for these things. And as I'm potting up, I need more and more space. So anybody that wants to... Take them now, you have a choice. Say that I have a good uh, All we care about at the PRS, if we sell it to you guys, that's fine. Or if we sell it at the show, the same amount of money in to pay for the show. So if you want to be a foster parent and say, oh, I really want to hormonally adopt, adopt. <laughs> you can adopt the rose. You just have to donate, that's all. Uh, but uh, I've got a lot of different roses that are over. 20 years old at home now, and a lot of them are very small, but uh, they're going to get bigger. So, uh, anybody that is interested in fostering more roses, and some people have signed up, over at the corner, uh, right next to Relief, uh, 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 yeah, in fact, Marie's hovering over it there, in the very corner, or next to you, what, Weldon? <laughs> uh, I was trying to find the Spotify part. Uh, sometimes I wonder about Siri. Uh, Ken has a sister who has a dog named Siri. Oh, that's so funny. If that's if that ever causes problems. Uh, in the corner there, uh, well, you, could you reach your left hand out? No, no. The, the application? The other left. No, no. Turn around, turn around, turn around. Reach out straight. Down there. That's the one that uh, has everybody's job for the Rose Society. I would love it if everybody picked up their, uh, and, and confirmed their job, or looked at the jobs and said, I can do that, and, and volunteer. So, uh, it's, it's hard to read, I think. Maybe you can pass those out or, or something. How can we get the ones that you said you want somebody to take care of them? I, they have to be picked up at my place or I can help deliver them at, at work. Uh, but if you want a choice, I haven't got a formal list, but I have a lot of room. Okay. Can we uh, give you like our email? Or? Yeah, you can uh, give me the email. In fact, I've got... Uh, he has cards. That's right. Yeah, I,